just making a beginner's guide on what to do when you start in Warframe. Now, I'm going to assume that you finished the Vor's Prize quest for this. If you have any questions, just let me know. Now, when you start the game, of course, you pick your weapon, you pick your frame, and then you do the quest, finish it, you get a bunch of mods, and now you're asking, what do you do? So, first things first, always look for some key mods when you're picking out your stuff. So, if you see a mod with cracks in it, that means it's a damage mod, and that is a mod exclusive to Void Prize. Uh, what these damage mods are, are basically access to mods that you get later in the game, or just maybe immediately after the quest, and stuff to start you off with so that you're not left with um, a pea shooter or a squishy frame for end game content. Well, not end game content, but to continue on the game. Now, uh, you're gonna want to focus on certain mods first. If you picked the Mark 1 Paris, speed trigger is gonna be an essential mod for you. And if you picked the Mark 1 Strun, let me show you in a second here if I can find Strun. Alright, so if you pick Mark 1 Strun, look for Point Blank. And if you pick Mark 1 Bratton or Mark 1 Paris, actually, um, both would really need Duration. So look for those mods when you're in your modding inventory, looking around and seeing what to put on your weapon those have to be priority. Now as for Warframe, Vitality, Redirection, Streamline if you found one, and Continuity if you found one. Um, if you picked, I don't remember what the starter frames are, but if you picked Excalibur, well, if you picked any frame, Redirection, Vitality, Streamline, can't go wrong with those. Intensify as well. Uh, those are definitely the mods I suggest you pick first. As for secondaries, Hornet Strike if you found one, and Gunslinger if you found one as well. For melees, Pressure Point. Doesn't matter what the others are, just put Pressure Point on first. Now, um, we have all your stuff, you have your Foundry, which is here. This is where you build weapons, warframes, gear, arc wings, wanding crops, keys, just everything. This is your building station. You're going to want to be able to have enough resources to build yourself a new weapon. Now, what I'll recommend as a new weapon for your primary, either Boltor or Karak. These two are very solid choices until you get to mid-game or until you're able to access the towers. For your secondary, I suggest choosing Lex, if I can find it, no, it's not a blueprint, uh, Lex, or Magnus or Vasco, one of those three. If you like automatic secondaries, I suggest picking Viper. It's easier to make than yours. Ballistica, don't use that. Atomos, you're not going to have mods for it, so stay away from that. Angstrom will end up getting you killed a lot early on. You don't want that to happen. Kunai is a very solid choice if you don't want to use weapons like conventional firearms. Heku works as well. Kunai just does more damage. Spira is for people who have been playing the game. I recommend Spira for people who have been playing the game for a lot longer. Who have the mods to be able to make this effective. Also, the material cost is quite a bit high for someone who's just starting. Kraken isn't an um, optimal choice for a starter. However, you can always uh, buy a Bolto blueprint if you have the materials for it. However, it's a little bit expensive. Two neurons and two organ cells for beginners is not something that you'd want to be using 
for a weapon. Sester is not that great either, just letting you know. Now, Stug is its own, is a wild card, if you ask me. I found the Stug to be very effective towards the late game, but you had to have a lot of Forma and a lot of mods for it. Moving on to melee weapons, you will not be able to access some of the weapons that you see on screen, primarily Galatine and Dragon Arcana. Those are monster launch, and I'll explain that further on. However, if you are able to build it, either Orthos or Sindo, uh, those are the two solid choices until you get to Mastery 3. Then battle of Galatine once you hit Mastery 3. And you wouldn't be you wouldn't need anything else at that point. Just have your pressure point and then this thing will shred everything early game. Now, as you can see, you have to buy a blueprint, and then it shows you resources. Oh, that's a bad... Ah, okay. So, as you can see, you have a blueprint. It costs them a certain amount of credits, and then it shows you the crafting requirements. For Tigris, it's 25,000 credits, 3 Orchid Cells, as you can read on screen, 900 Circuits, 1,200 Salvage, 1,200 Rubido. Now, there's going to be definitely a lot of questions on where to get the resources and I'll show you here if you go to navigation you f here's where you start right here you click on the planet and on the top right corner you'll see the resources that drops in the planet now each planet always carries two rare resources a common resource and an uncommon resource only one planet I know of um, off the top of my head carries two rares and two uncommon. Now for Mercury, the rares are Morphix and Detonite Ampules, and the common is Ferrite, the uncommon is Polymer Bundles. Now to unlock new planets or new systems as I'm going to call them in the video, and how they've been called since 2013, each planet quote unquote is a system. Each mission is a node. So each node has different mission types. You have survival, defense, capture, sabotage, exterminate, mobile defense, interception, spy, deception, assassinate, and excavation, which is not on Mercury. To unlock new planets, what you have to do is you have to start here's where you start on mercury you have to keep you have to play through the mission only once is the maximum you needed you only have to play it once you have to play each mission once and extract successfully once you've extracted it'll unlock any missions that are adjacent to it so that means any missions that are touching that node so when you finish apollodorus you unlock larry's from larry's you unlock coloris in Caloris, you lock Elian and Naruda. You're just going to have to go through the top row here until you get to Tolstoy. There, you'll fight Captain Vor. And he's pretty tough early on, I will admit. But usually there's open squads fighting him, so you'll be fine. After you unlock Mercury, you unlock Venus. And here's where I'm going to tell you something new. Well, not new, but you have Warframes that you can buy. So when you start, you have two Warframe slots. So you have your starter, and then you can build one more for that Warframe slot. Now, the earliest and the best early game frame that you can get is Rhyna. So what you have to do is you have to go to, let me uh, explain it step by step. You go to Market. You click R1 if you're on PS4, or just tab over if you're on PC or Xbox. You're going to go down to the Rhino Blueprint. You're going to see that it requires 25,000 credits and then three pieces for the Warframe. Now, when you're building a Warframe, you have to build those three pieces that are listed on screen. However, as you can see, 
the pieces are not in the Warframe blueprint section. So the question is, how do you get the blueprints for the pieces? Simple answer, you have to beat a boss fight. Um, a certain boss fight will drop a certain frame's parts, respectively. Now for Rhino specifically, you're going to want to go to Venus. And I'll play as Rhino Prime to show you that. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of fusion cores, so I don't really have a lot of max out mods, which is not very professional, but as I can understand. But you're going to fight a new faction when you go to Venus. That's going to be the Corpus. The Corpus are weak to magnetic damage, which you will not be able to make until you get two elemental mods. You're going to need Cryo Rounds and Stormbringer. And if you're lucky and have a lot of plat, well not really a lot, but if you're lucky to find anyone who's selling them, High Voltage and Rhyme Rounds do the same. So I will just show you, we just go to Venus. Then you go to Fossa. Jackal's an easy boss fight to fight. Uh, the basics are that you need to shoot his legs and do enough damage to the legs to open up the torso for damage. The torso is the weak spot of, uh, is his weak spot. Now, if you have a high damaging weapon like I do, with which is Volcar, a sniper, you will probably be able to one shot him. But that's with mods. So for the most part, the only people who one shot him are people who've been playing the game for a while. He's a lot easier than Vor, if you ask, uh, because Vor has these periods where he regenerates health. Jackal doesn't do that, so you don't have to worry about it. And uh, the helmet I'm using for Rhino is an arcane helmet. You won't have this helmet. Um, you won't. You were not able to have this helmet for a long while now. So you're gonna want to go to Fossa. I'll go solo for this to demonstrate. And just you can ignore all the enemies. Run through, then fight the boss. Now, you're going to need. You're going to want some mods for this boss fight. So, you're going to want. Well, you're not going to want mods. You're just going to need. You need to have to at least level up your weapon to fit on some mods to make it a little bit stronger. Obviously, you won't have the kind of mods that are just doing crazy damage, as you can see here. But just have enough to be able to do some damage to these enemies. Anything that's more or less a uh, couple of. You could do 50 damage or something. In a, in a span of at least. One and a half seconds will be fine. These enemies don't have a lot of health. Now, I probably right now will do over uh, what Jackal helps have to, which I believe is 4,000, 5,000 if I remember correctly. It's quite a bit for the early levels, but when you get to the late game, that's probably a basic enemy's health bar. Anything from level 30 onwards will have this over 2,000 health. But at that point, scale. you should have weapons that do that kind of damage anyway. As you can see, there's a lot of ice do here. It's an RNG thing with the ship tile set, where there'll be yet. a cryo leak, or there'll be some fire damage to the ship. Stay clear of the fire damage, the cryo damage won't do anything to you besides lower your shield. And here we are with Jackal. He's going to summon some drones, if I remember correctly. Okay, so as you see, I killed Jackal, and 
now I'm in the track. Now with Rhino, his first ability has a combo timer. And the more you cost it, the less it's going to cost. Um, as long as you're in the multiplier. And each cost will do more damage as well, uh, depending on power strength. Now, like I said, Rhino's the easiest frame to acquire, as well as the Target easiest frame to use. For most of this, as Great you can see, I just got a blueprint for the helmet, a Jupiter in that segment, and the house of the Kubra flag. The thing about Hydra, uh, the thing about Rhino, is that he's the slowest frame in the game, for one special reason, he's the tankiest one. Now, what makes Rhino so tanky? Well, quite frankly, his second ability. Oh, I just got death marked by Stalker. Stalker is a secret admirer in this game, or an assassin type enemy. He will hunt you down in missions that are not assassinate. So if you're doing an exterminate, you have, I believe it is, a 1% chance of him showing up. Now, it's an urban legend, but it does seem to be the most case, uh, the most common case, where if you're leveling up a weapon or a warframe, he'll tend to show up then. But like I said, it's an urban legend, it's not true. Now, here we are in the foundry, in the warframe section, and here's the rhino helmet. Now, his helmet requires a neural sensor, and the only place in the entire game to get neural sensors is Jupiter. And luckily for you, you've unlocked Jupiter from beating Jackal. Now, you just have to repeat the boss fight until you get all three blueprint parts, so the helmet, the chassis, and the system. And once you've built all three, which each takes approximately 12 hours, well, each does take 12 hours. You will then be able to build the frame. The frame, however, takes a lot longer to build. A whopping total of three real time days. Luckily, if you're offline, it still counts. So don't worry about having to stay, uh, have your PlayStation, Xbox, or PC signed in for those three days. Now those are simple stuff, you will need. Now some good starter frames are, like I said, Rhino, for, and well actually no sorry, some good frames to supplement your starter frames are Rhino, Oberon, and what was the one? Valkyrie. Those three are very solid secondary frames to start with. Um, Rhino and Valkyr are... Ry Valkyr is a bit harder to play than the other two until you get her fourth ability because Valkyr has the lowest shield amount in the game with a total of 50 shields base. Now her armor is the highest base in the game with 600 and that's just ridiculous because it makes her tanky. Now Valkyr's fourth ability is Hysteria, where she's imbued with energy and becomes a ball of vicious rage. A ball of vicious rage is a very good description of it because she is immune whilst Hysteria is active. Hysteria is an energy drain over time ability, so if you have a high energy pool, you're going to have a long time with Hysteria active. Hysteria bases its damage off of its power strength and the damage of your melee weapons. Not the, no, sorry, and the mods of your melee weapons. So the damage doesn't do anything to the melee weapons, but these mods will change the properties of your hysteria. Spoiled Strike will slow it down, but will increase the attack damage per hit, which is crazy for, you know, for an ability. Because slowing it down is, uh, if you slow down Hysteria, 
luckily you don't have to worry about losing um health for your speed loss. But something like Excalibur's Exalted Blade will be very hurt by Spoil Strike. Um that brings me to another point of modding. Spoil Strike is a mod called a Vault Mod. And Vault Mods are obtained by going to the Orokin Derelict missions, which require nav coordinates to, to be built, to build them. I simply recommend doing Orokin Derelict Exterminate for, um, just for doing your vault runs, because they're easier to get through. Because, uh, the enemies are lower leveled than the other missions. And you need to build Dragon Keys, which require Tower Keys, or Orokin Void Keys. Now that's the big mystery that I've been hearing about in terms of the new player experience, which is, of course, the Orokin Void. Now, as it stands, Orokin Void is pretty difficult for lower level people, but Tower 1 stuff, as you can see, is not something to just scoff and say it'll be easy. You can easily get overwhelmed in Tower 1 if you're not prepared as a newer player. Um, Tower 1 is the equivalent of being on Jupiter, I believe. Yeah. So if you can handle Jupiter, you can handle any Tower 1 mission. Except the Endless ones, if you decide to go for very long runs. Because Endless missions have Endless level ups. And some of the levels you can see, well, they don't stop leveling, that's the thing. And their, stop, their stats don't stop scaling either. So they can have anywhere from 3,000 health to 3 million health. And you can't change that, unless if you extract a rogue. <laughs> now, the way you get orc and void keys is... If you want to get some Tower 1 or Tower 2 keys early, go to Apollodorus and Mercury. You have a higher drop chance for those keys. And just stay there for about 20 minutes and then extract. And just keep rinsing and repeating until you have a desirable amount of keys that you would like to have. Once you have those keys, you can go to the void and bring some friends with you if you want them to help you out or if you just don't want to do it by yourself. I tend to do a lot of stuff solo since not many of my friends are online that I play with. Um, another word of advice is to stay away from impact weapons um, early on. You're going to want stuff that does slash. Slash is the best damage type in game. So something like the Strun is fine because it just does a lot of damage since it's a shotgun. But your rifles, Bratton is actually a pretty good choice. Let me show you. It does, ow, it does even amounts of damage for all three damage types except for Slash, which it does a markedly higher amount. Now, as you can see, Burston is equally split. But Burston does not have the DPS that. Bratton has. Bratton has a much higher fire rate. And the accuracy is more or less the same. The thing about Burston is the del uh, the thing that hinders its DPS is the delay between bursts. And that's what will get you killed. So Bratton over Burston. Even the primes. Bratton Prime over Burst and Prime simply because the crit is just um, the crit's higher, so you can have more of that chance of having high damage for random for random times, and the multiplier is higher as well. And um, I don't think I have anything else to add besides uh, quests actually. The quests you're going to want to do very soon, as uh, early as possible, are your Howl of the Kubro and the Arkling. Because once you have the Arkling quest, you can do the Limbo Theorem. And you'll be able to get one of the 
the most gentleman-like frames in the game. Actually, he is the gem, the gentleman frame. Limbo. <laughs> but other than that, just um, keep tr keep grinding at these missions. Keep grinding for the weapons you want, and always remember, if a what if you have a weapon you don't like, get it to level 30 before you sell it. So that way you get the mastery rank out of it. Now, mastery rank, you have to do mastery rank tests to get a higher rank, and you can only do one per day, well, per 24 hours. So always account for that, and don't be af uh, don't be discouraged if you do fail a test. Any mastery you gain after you reach the max rank for that um, allotted level will be carried over to your next level. So I've had that. Uh, issue or well, I had that little worry when I was doing my mastery 8 stuff because I failed that quite a bit <laughs> so I was wondering if I lost all that mastery and I got answered with uh, no I don't I don't lose it so keep that in mind so don't panic about um, being able to lose mastery unless of course you sell your weapons before you finish uh, getting them to level 30 and you only get the mastery from leveling up your weapons, warframes, or your companions, and their weapons if it's a sentinel. You only get the mastery for it from the first time you get the mastery.